I'm gonna take you through another fish processing video. Um, just kind of talk a little bit about what we're gonna do, the different types of fish that you catch here in Alaska and how we're going to prep them. So this first fish that I'm gonna show you guys, this is actually a pink salmon, also known as a humpy. A couple of ways you can tell a humpy apart from a sockeye is obviously they're gonna have a hump on the top if you see right here, right there. That's a, a hump. Um, this is a male salmon. You can tell by the snout. It's got the hooked snout on it. Another couple ways you can tell is they're obviously not as bright. They do not have big round scales that you'll see on a sockeye or a silver. Uh, they also have spots. So as you can see coming down, he's got a thinner back, a taller back. And then most importantly on the tail, you're going to see spots. So it's going to have spots kind of coming through. His tail's also been clipped. We do that here for subsistence. That shows that we had an um, um, upper cook and lit permit, dip netting permit. Um, there's also going to have spots on the dorsal fin. So I went ahead and just opened him up earlier. It is a male, so I'm not going to be keeping anything, obviously, as far as the intestines go. Um, but I'll take you through what that looks like as I process. So all this stuff I'm just going to toss. There's the liver, the esophagus that kind of goes down through the stomach. I can actually show you guys his heart if I can get it out. There's the heart. Keep any of that. I come in and just kind of clean this out with my bait knife. And so for pinks, um, I'm not a big fan of baking or grilling pinks. To me, they're they're softer meat, they're not as bright, they're not as fresh. So what I do is anytime I get a pink, I chunk it and I freeze it in preparation for canning. And at the end of every season in October, I'll do a big canning party. What I do is I'm, I do some regular canned salmon, but then I also do some lightly smoked canned salmon that works really great for dips. And it's great around the holidays when you're questioning why you still live in this state. We like to refer to it as, um, why do I live where it hurts my face? Yes, where the air hurts my face and it's completely dark all the time. So I come through and I showed you guys in the last video, I like to clean this blood all out, this coagulated blood. I like to get this really nice and clean. Um, just get all that blood out. I don't freeze fish with any blood in them. I will be saving the head. That's for halibut fishing. Halibut loves salmon heads. And on this fish that I'm going to show you next is the sockeye. I'm going to be also saving eggs. So I come back in here and I just really try to clean out this blood as much as possible. Really clean this up. I'm just using a, a dish towel for right now. I have a mat that I use, but it was unfortunately either got misplaced or stolen. So I'm going to be getting a new mat before we get the rest of our fish. We got the first two out of our 75. So we have 73 more fish to go. This is just kind of the first video. But I like to keep something down here to keep the fish from sliding around, ruining my cut. So what I'm going to be doing with this fish is I'm going to be taking the head and then I'm going to be chunking it out. And um, that's so I said I can, I can can, get a little bit of a better angle here. So the first thing I do is I'm going to go ahead and pull that head off. There you go. See that nice sock, that nice pink meat, and this will give me a, um, a better angle to get the rest of this blood out here. But you can really see how pink this meat is, and I will show you in comparison to sockeye fillets and why there is a difference. So if you go to the store, um, if you're in the lower 48 or even in Alaska, you know the difference between pink and sockeye. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this nasty blood out of here, clean that up. Come back in with my sprayer. Get all that out. All right, 
right now, I'm going to come through here and just put this guy in chunks. And I like to do about two inch chunks. They're easier to work with when you're canning. And I go ahead and I don't skin my fish until I'm actually in the canning process. It just saves time. They're a little bit easier, I found, to skin when they're frozen. I like to try to get the fins off of them while I got them out. This. There's even kind of a dorsal fin back here that I take. Clean up all these fins. There you go, and that's kind of what the chunks are going to come out, the steaks are going to come out looking like. Another one down here. And then I'm gonna come down just by just behind the tail. Get that last bit. Alright. Get rid of the tail. And then I had a bowl. Gonna go ahead and set these in a bowl for right now, and I will go back through and clean them again before I backpack them. And actually, with pinks, I prefer to do a light freeze on them before I backpack because they are very fishy, or they're very oily and slimy, I should say. So I don't like to ruin. I don't like. I have a tendency to try to ruin my stripping on my vacuum sealer. So there's those. No. I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna do a quick rinse on this, and I'll show you guys the sockeye. All right, so this is a sockeye, and I'm gonna show you the difference in meat here when I get it um, cut open. This is a really nice sockeye, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and keep the fillets on this one. We do a lot of grilling, baking, barbecuing, um, anything like that, throughout, especially throughout the winter. So I'm really picky about when I get a fish and process a fish, I decide really then when I lay my fish out, what I'm going to can, what I'm going to just keep frozen. So this is also going to be a female. I'll show you how you can tell. For those of you who are from the States, you see how she does not have a hooked nose. It's kind of stubbed right here. That's indicative that's a female salmon. Okay, I've seen them occasionally be different, but that's basically the rule of the road up here. Um, nice, good sized hen is what they call them. So I'm going to come through, gut her first. I'm going to be keeping her eggs for bait for silver salmon. I always use my Dexter, and I just come in, open her up like this, all the way up through the gill plate, and there you have it. There's the eggs. I'm going to be keeping these for bait. I might even get daring with them and try to cook something yet. I don't know. Never been, been one for caviar, but you see how nice and pretty those eggs are. Here's the second egg sack. Go ahead and just clean her up really well. here you guys can see and I'm gonna be peeling this back to get this 
coagulated blood out of here. Just come through. I really love Dexter's too, because if you can tell on this knife, I have a serrated edge and I also have a straight edge, which I really love. Love that about Dexter's. And I just use my nails carefully because as you get into the bones, you can cut up your fingers. That's a mistake you won't do twice. Get all the blood out. And once I take her head off, I'm going to do get a lot more of the blood. Here. Off with her head. <laughs> off with her head. I try to keep and save as much of every salmon as I possibly can. Here's another look at the heart for those of you who are interested in that kind of stuff. again just so you guys can get a good look at how I do it. Everybody fillets a little bit differently. It's not really a right way or a wrong way. Some people remove the belly, some people don't. Um, it's really just kind of up to you how you want to do it. I've been doing it a certain way and I've had comments that people don't like the way that I fillet but you know you do it for so long one way and it's hard to change it up. I was actually a deckhand for many years before I started fishing the river so just have it down. I like to just go right behind the gill plate here, come down to where I've opened it up before, come inside, start your cut. Now I'm going to angle my knife down a little bit. If you angle your knife up at all, you're going to miss meat. And I try to not, I try not to miss, try to keep as much meat as I can. If you keep this in one solid motion, you keep as much meat on your fillet as you can. And I'll go back through and clean it all up. I'm also going to come through and really clean up the meat that's left. Now I'm going to show you guys the difference here, and I want you guys to really pay attention why there's a difference between pinks and reds. Why sockeyes are different. So here you have your pink fillet, or your pink chunks, and here you have your sockeye. This tastes a lot better <laughs> than your pinks. That's why you'll hear um, Alaskans can be really snobby when they get a pink. They're they're gonna be like, I don't I don't like it. I don't want a pink, and they throw them back. I think fish is fish. I'm grateful for any fish that we're given. Um, but yes, sockeyes are. This is why sockeyes are more expensive at the grocery store. Even canned sockeye is gonna be more expensive than your pink. For that reason, right there. Like I said, I don't waste anything, so. You see there's a little hiccup right here. I try to keep this smooth all the way down. Sometimes you get a little bit of a divot in your fillet. I hate that. I'm really weird about my fillets. But in this case, I'm going to be going back through with an ice cream scooper and peeling this meat out. And I usually will can that and I use it in chowders. All that good stuff. So I like to flip her over. And I'm going to be going, doing the same thing on this side, coming down through here. Now this one I have a tendency to have a little bit more trouble with filleting. I have a tendency to go right through, which is what I just did, I bet you. is always a little bit more difficult for me to do so I'm going to come in here and really just clean out what's left and get all the meat that I possibly can and then I'll go through and pull the bones so you can see I kind of peeled back some of these bones and there's people who are so good at filleting they can do that and leave the whole carcass with bones included I'm not quite that good so I'm going to peel the bones afterwards all right so I just take my uh, ice cream scooper this is Alaskan ice cream and I'm going to come in here and really get as much of this meat out as possible. This one is a pretty nice fillet, so I didn't really leave that much, but I don't waste anything. Flip it over, and then I always save the carcasses for, as dog food. 
This one I left a little bit more meat on, but that's okay. I'm gonna save it. So as you can see, I did a, these are fairly nice, decent fillets. I didn't leave a lot of meat. That's all the meat that I had to scoop. So that's a good fillet. And then I'm gonna come in here and remove the head because I keep those heads for the halibut. There's the head. I'm gonna throw it in my freezer back here for fish heads. And then for the rest of this, I'm gonna be boiling this down. And it's great for our German Shepherd, especially in the winter time. Just fold it up, throw it in the bag that I've got going on here for carcasses. And then I'm going to kind of go over these fillets really quick. This one is already pretty much deboned, but I'm going to come through here. And I always will pull the pin bones with um, hemostats before we before we eat. So I don't worry about those right now, but I just try to, I don't like to freeze with any of the stuff that was touching the belly. So, so this one, you see how I'm going to just kind of come in here behind the bones and very carefully peel them out because you don't want to take out any meat, but you want to get out as much of this crud as you can. I got a little bit too much into the meat there. And I'm just going to kind of come down here. Peel these out. Hung up in a fin. Okay, and then I'm gonna come through here, getting bit by mosquitoes, <laughs> and I'm gonna put these into thirds to, to freeze. And then I'll be cleaning these guys up again before I backpack them. a little bit and once again I'm gonna do thirds that's just kind of portion sized and then I'm gonna throw my canning meat in my red and there you guys have it a couple different ways to process fish these are sockeye fillets these are humpies or pinks that are getting ready, that are staked for canning. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the fillets first. I always make sure, number one, they're very dry. I have a clean towel here. I bleach, I have like a whole pile of just fish towels that I bleach. I make sure that they're really nice and dry. Um, otherwise you can actually really hurt your vacuum sealer. And this is a commercial grade vacuum sealer, so I'm not interested in harming it. You can see it's nice and bright. I'll go ahead and, and I just do one fillet at a time. I like to make sure that these don't come unsealed. You line it up. Make sure you don't cover any of your vent holes here. And this is like got a new strip in it, so I'm gonna make sure I put a little quite a bit of pressure. I hold this part up so that it's even, and then mine is um, already on the auto on automatic adjustment. So um I don't have to mess with it. I kind of went over this in my last video. 
um, but you really want to make sure that you're not lifting up on this lid too soon. You want to make sure that this is not peeling up. And um, you also really want to make sure that your seal is completely across. There you have it. Nail sized bullet. but I'm still working on filling this one up. We do have quite a bit of sockeye in here. Some of it's from last year's dip netting. Some of it's been gifted to us. Um, some of it's trade. But I do this in different sections. So the pinks I'm gonna keep aside. I'm gonna put them up here so that I know. And then I have a whole roll of just sockeye fillets. Shove these in there. Those gone. Have my halibut. I also have a Winter King filet that was gifted to us by um, the Shady Ranch down in Homer. There you have it. Uh, the first day we've really gone down and gotten anything as far as dip netting goes. We have 73 more fish to go. Oh yeah. This was just the beginning. We just wanted to, it was a little windy on the water today, so we didn't want to take the boat out. That's why we just went down off the banks to see what we could get. Later on this week, we're going to be We're going to be taking the boat, the boat out. Yeah. Yep. So the end product of today is two fish frozen toes, and uh, a whole lot of fun. A whole lot of fun. 73 more fish to go. Thank you. Keep up with us. Like and subscribe and hit the bell for our notifications.